Yeah, if you've ever wondered how you could do an auto number in Creator, and it's very similar to what you would do in like Deluge in uh, the CRM as well, sometimes you just don't want the auto number. Um, you want to see some custom type specialized type of uh, maybe an order number or something like that. So that's what we're going to address in this video. We're going to look at use case here. So you want to identify your different order types with a custom number, not just an auto number field where it goes one, two, three, four, and increments every single order and maybe customizing that because you, with an auto number field, it's just going to tick off for every order. It's not going to make it specific to the order type. So what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a structure like this. A type of an order is going to drive what the first letter is, so P. Uh, it's going to be the auto number here and then the year of the order. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say for every P, it starts off with one, goes to two, goes to three, etc. So let's go ahead and show what that looks like. If we look in Creator here, so we've got a list here of product one, product two, and then PS. So what we have is an order fee, order form, which is product. It's automatically going to go to the next one. If I do service, it's going to go to the next one there. If I go to product and service, it's going to go to two. Uh, if I go to service again, submit that. I go to service again, it's going to be four. If I go back to that product one, it's going to be three because the last one's two. Then we'll go look at that list here again. And we can sort it by that list. You can see all the P's are grouped together, one, two, three. The PS is by itself. And then we've got one, two, three, four for the services. So we've got this auto number that's taking place. We're going to dive into this right now. So the way you create this, again, we just have a new order. I fired up a quick little form here that says, here's the order type. We have three order types I've entered. So if I go into Edit, and we go into this form, which is the only form within this app. I click on this. All I did was a pick list field. So we've got order type. You can see product, service, product, service. And then order number is just simply a single line. That's all it is. Nothing special here. But you can see these are only two. There's no hidden fields or anything about auto number. So what we're going to do is create this now. So what you do is you go into workflow, and you go to new workflow. And by the way, this is the new format, so it might look a little different if you haven't migrated yet. I think everybody's doing it now. It's July 2020, so I think Zoho's moving everybody over to this new format. So within the form, new order, you're going to see here's uh, one that I created. But I'm going to go ahead and start new workflow so you can see what it looks like. So in this form, I'm going to do it only when it's created. Uh, we could do it when it's created or edited, but we're just going to go ahead and do it on created. It's going to trigger on the user input of a field. That's what we're going to do. Choose the field. We're saying based on the order type, it's going to trigger that. That's what caused this. So when I was doing this, it's on the change of that field that it updates the order number. It doesn't post it, and that's why I can switch between these. It's just saying, here's what the order number is going to be. So you could disable this field. In fact, maybe I'll do that in this uh, video too. It's just show you how you disable this. So someone can't come in here and change it. Um, Okay, so order type and then name the workflow. That's basically all I did for this. I'm going to close this now. And this is what was created. So what I did is an action, right? When I did new action, it basically is going to create a deluge script. So it opens up a, a blank page like this. So if I were to go back here again and do new action, it's going to look like this. So what we're going to do is put this together. I've already got it here, so what I'm going to do is really just review it for you, just to save time, because I could walk through this and spend time doing that, um, but I think for both of our times, it's better for me just to create it and then walk through it. So what we're doing with this first line here is we're saying that form is called new order. And you can go over here in that form, in edit, and you can look at rename, and you can see what the form link is. It's called new order. So if you're working on someone else's creator and uh, it's not working because it's not new order, it's possible this form link is a different, it's different than what they labeled it as. So anyways, uh, we'll go back here. So it's new order. Then you have these brackets. This is what the search is going to be on. So the order type is what we're looking at. And uh, we're going to look at what was input in that order type field. So again, here, it's looking at what was put in. Okay, and then what we're doing is we're trying to find the last order that was done for that order type. So, okay, the order type equals what was put in. 
So it's going to grab the subset of those. So if we look at that list again, um, the list of orders, when I put in P, it's looking at these three. It's ignoring the rest of these, just these three. Okay, so then we're going to say, let's sort by the added time. So the most recent one is what we want, descending. And we only want one. We don't need all of them. We just need the last one. So that's what that is. So it provides an info, which is the last order, order number. So if I go back over here, and I go to new order, you'll notice down here there's nothing. But when I click on this product, you'll see view log details. That's the info. So this info right here. So as you're testing it, you can see what's happening. If I view the log details, the first info here is the order number, the last one. That's P3 2020. Okay. Then we're going to say the year. We want the year in this particular instance. Uh, is 2020. So we're going to grab the year and we do that by a function called today. That's just a standard function in Zoho. And then we're going to dot get year. So what this does, if we look at that log again, is grabbing the year. Okay. Then we're going to say if it's a certain order type, we're going to do the preface or the prefix of it. And so if it's a product, we're going to put P. If it's a service, we're going to put S. And if it's a uh, else. So if it's not a product or a service, it's probably going to be a product and service. So we're just going to label that PS. So what this is, if last order dot count is greater than zero, the only time, well, I mean, this is going to run every time, but the reason I wrote it this way is on the first time you do it, uh, it's going to be this else one. It's going to be the first number, right? So if I clear out everything, which I'll probably do is just clear out everything, you'll see that if I don't do that, then it's going to bomb, right? Because that first order is not in place for that particular order type. So now that this is going to be most of the bulk of what we're doing, and what it's doing is it's taking apart uh, the last order. So if we look at the last order is P-3-2020. So it's P-3-2020. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, of that last order, and the order number, which is this P-3-2020, we're going to get the suffix. What that means is we're going to grab this part here. So that's what this is. This ends up resulting, if I went info, get suffix first, first dash. I'm going to do this, get number. Okay, so we already have that info. We're going to run it again. I'm going to update this. And we're going to go back here and take a look at this again. So I pressed escape there to get rid of it. And now I'm going to go product. Let's look at service. It's S5 2020. So here's S4 2020. This is the year we can ignore that. But if you, the get suffix pulls the 4-2020, as you can see here. Okay. So then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, with that get suffix first dash right here. So of this part. Now I want to grab the prefix, that's this number. I want to grab the four, ignoring the dash 2020. So what we're saying is get prefix of that dash, that's the get number, that's the four that you see. Then we're going to create a new number, this is called a variable. The new number is going to look at that get number, and then we're going to say, we're going to convert that to a number and we're going to add one to it. Okay, so what we're doing is we're grabbing this four, we're going to add, grab a five, or add, make it a five, and then the input order number equals the order type, which we've done up here, plus this new number, plus the year. That's what results. So let me do this info here, info new number, just so you can see that it is five. And by the way, if you want to put like, instead of going over here and guessing what each one of these things are, you can always just put quotes in and say, the new number is. And then the little plus sign, new number. Okay, so we'll come back over here. I'll press escape. We're going to go back to product. Look at the logs. The new number is four. So the last one was three. The new number is four. Okay, so then what we do is we say input the order number. That means it puts it in that field, the order number, that new number. And that's it. Simple. So you may not have it as complex as doing the dashes and things like that. I thought, okay, or you just want to do a simple order number. You could do it the same way. You could do simply uh, just add the number. So get whatever the number is, make it, a, if it's just a string, which that field order number is a string field. It's not a number field. So in order to increment, 
it, you have to change it into a decimal first because it's a string. It's just text, basically. And you're going to add numbers, so then you can add the number. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error for you. Uh, that's it. So let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to show you the disabling, too. So let's say we're done with this. We're going to go uh, user input of a field. No, we don't need that. So we're going to go new workflow. It's new order. That's fine when it's created. Actually, this one we probably do created or edited. And load of the form is what we're going to do. Actually, we could do this. Field rules. Uh, disable. Uh, what was it? Order number. We're going to come here and go disable fields. We're going to pick that order number and save. And done. Okay, so now if I go back into this, refresh it, product, you can see I can't change this. It's disabled now, but it still saves it. So if I go product again, it should be product five. I still can't change it. And there you have it. So uh, was there anything else I was going to show you? I think that was about it. So I hope that helps. Feel free to add any comments or anything. Oops. Oh, boy, I just changed this, didn't I? Oh, and you know what? There's some steps I was going to show you, too. But anyways, here's... Oh, boy, I really just messed up, didn't I? Okay, this is great. Always happens on a video, it seems like. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I think I was going to show you this, too, which is the steps we just took, which is create the order type, create the workflow, look for the past order, parse out the number, add one to it. And I don't think I showed this in the early part of the video, but oh, well, I make mistakes. That's for sure. Anyways, I uh, hope you're having a great day and uh, keep learning.